And I took up the Chen Machine Gun uh, subject. The Dieter Shah is broken, just uh, to attract a lot of people. Um, there is a problem with Dieter Shah, and I want to show you, and it will, uh, it will hurt you if you don't know it. Don't know about it. So, Do you have solutions too? Uh, there's also a solution, yeah. And, uh, that involves uh, thinking, and uh, that's always hard. Yeah. So, oh, really uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. So, is he going to have a chance? No, no, no. 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 So, let's. Uh, Let's start with a little bit of history. Um, maybe you recognize this. If you, uh, in the very early days, the computers were very slow and so on, and uh, the communication was using the big telephone lines and uh, copper wires. Um, uh, you needed a lot of protection against uh, bit flops, bit, just bits falling over during the communication. And one of the, the easiest uh, ways to protect you, or, or detect at least that uh, something is wrong, is by adding some parity. So here you see seven bits of uh, character communication, and these are the bits, 0011 or the other way around, and then you get the parity bit, and the parity uh, uh, is it's a little trick. Either you use even parity, that means the bits you want to uh, communicate, including the parity bit, is either uh, even altogether if you sum them, so this is uh, uh, zero, Added zero. This is an even number now, and here you have one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's even again. So it's correct. So either you have an even parity algorithm to see whether bit flaws happen, or uh, you have no parity where you just uh, uh, add all the bits and it should be an odd number. So the parity bit is can be used to detect whether bit flaws happen. And uh, uh, you cannot correct it if there's a bit flaw. It's just an, uh, an error, transmission error, and you have to resend it or something like that. But this is very low level communication. Then you've got the uh, CSC codes, which is uh, a lot smarter. Uh, CSC codes can not only check whether bits fall over, but also uh, correct them. Now, well, this takes some time to, to correct bits. Uh, but here you have a sequence you want to transmit. And then you get some number, and that's uh, 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 these were very sm wisely, smartly chosen numbers, usually 32 bits. And you do a, a division. I don't know how it is called in English. Tail division or something like that. Long division. Long division. Long division. Long division. Long division. Uh, to to get a number, just like you, had, you learned on the on your primary school. Um, Dividing in, in binary is, by the way, very, very simple. And long division is much easier in binary than in decimal. Because it's, it's either it fits or it doesn't fit. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's really easy to implement as well, if, if you want to implement a, a division yourself. In, uh, in for square root, it's even simpler, because then you can shift two bits at the same time in advance. But, uh, so what, what you get is, this is the, the real message to be transported. Here you get the remaining, you transport it as well, you add that. And then uh, the receiver is also getting these, uh, these bits <coughs> and check it. But if there is a mistake, if there are bits falling over, then you can fix them. Although it can be compute intensive, if there are a lot of bits failing, but uh, if there are one or two bits failing, you can just uh, multiply again and then see the, some of the tricks of difference. So it's all about transport security and uh, storage. You see CSC usually used on the, on disk blocks, for instance, high disk blocks, uh, on all other places to just have a uh, check. And one of the uh, the other, so you can fix this, and the other thing is that you can uh, uh, do it both ways. Yeah. Yeah. Crypto checksums are just in the, in the, for me in my opinion in the, in the same process, same same idea. And you see that also for the application. The big main difference between CSC codes is that's one way function. So you get a, a bit stream and you compute the crypto checksum on it, you send it with it, and uh, uh, then you can you can find whether there are transmission problems, yeah, whether there are bits uh, left out. Uh, you can prove that the data has not been changed because it's uh, very difficult to to, uh, to send another text string with the same signature. 
And although MD5, for instance, is known to be broken, well, try to do it, it's very difficult. You can, uh, uh, MD5, you can produce a second text message with different content, which has the same MD5 text. For SHA-1, it's very hard still, to, but it's, if you have enough computing power, and it's a like computing power, then you can maybe, with some efforts, produce a second text. But, it's quite relatively safe. Um, so this is the um, say the, 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 the logical step from the previous two slides that you have these manipulations and the text up, but there's no correction because it's a one-way function. So uh, you, you should uh, uh, do the quite expensive MD5 text for all the bit fills possible, and uh, that's uh, well, not, not really doable. Uh, a very important use is uh, in, in uh, uh, yeah. A condensed entropy, uh, entropy, entropy, entropy. I mean, for instance, if you have uh, HIT and you have a lot of changes in your HIT repository, by calculating an MD5, uh, this identifier, you can have uh, uh, a unique identification for many, many, many lines of changes. So you can just, and it's uh, uh, still the idea that it's quite hard to, to make two texts resulting in exactly the same MD5 checks. So this is a very important use, yeah. And uh, hashing, uh, hashing is uh, especially um, focused on this one-way function. For instance, the password in the password file is uh, encrypted, MD5 or SHA1 or other. And uh, uh, it, it is also kind of entropy, entropy, but usually these uh, these strings are quite short. You start them, and uh, uh, you don't want to, to store passwords in your text, do you? So you, you calculate the MD5, and if, you, if someone else comes to the same password, then it will result in the same MD5. But it's very hard to figure out to find a password which, also, which is different, which also matches the same MD5. So, for instance, set the height passwords uh, in, the, in the shadow file. Uh, this is an indication of what algorithm is used, and this is the MD5 for shallow. And the, the password is nowhere in plain text. Could you uh, close the door, maybe block some of the noise out uh, from the hall? Sorry? Could you close the door and block some of the noise? Uh, okay. Thanks. So, this is uh, where I use it. Uh, for instance, uh, it is one of the places uh, I use it on a XML. And uh, crypto signatures in XML, it's, it's horrible. So, why to read it between all these uh, new records? Um, uh, what you get is uh, a SOAP message, some XML message to speak between applications. And the, uh, the message has a header and a body. And just like in, in HTTP, you have a header and a body. In the body is the, the real information, in the header is some additional information. In this case, it's a crypto signature. About the body, so that no one has done much of the body. And then you get uh, so here the body has an ID. In the header, I, I have a signature, and the signature references the body. I'm going to sign this body. It's a two steps. First, you have a, a digest. Uh, it calculates SHA1 for the whole body, the XML body. And then the second thing is that you have the, this, this header itself. Is then signed by a certificate. So it's a two step process. First, a SHA about what is in it. Well, uh, there's even one very horrible extra complication in this. Uh, XML is, uh, uh, well, um, you, you can, for instance, change the, the order of the attributes in the XML, or you can change the namespace decorations in your XML. Just use a different prefix for. Uh, a certain, uh, now I have to use prefix uh, uh, WSU, uh, but I can just change the name for it. I left out all the prefix declarations in this uh, example. So uh, it's a, it's a three-step process. The first step is canonization. Canonization C14N uh, is uh, usually used for it because it's such a difficult name to pronounce. C. So C14N means C and then 14 characters and then an N. But it cannot colonization. And it tries to uh, 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 
to, to make this XML message in a standard form. So what's in a standard form? Uh, it, it's, it can be in Latin one, for instance, XML, but usually it's UTF-8. So the canonization will translate it into UTF-8. It will uh, sort uh, all these uh, attributes alphabetically. And it will fill in defaults and all those values and so on. And the, the weird thing is that the, the signatures on XML messages are on uh, uh, the, the level of intelligence of what is there and not on the bytes. Canalization is a horrible process and uh, uh, it's uh, very difficult uh, to, to write applications that canalization for all the libraries work. So you must be very careful about what you're doing. Then, so you get canalization, then you get this digest of the canalization, canalization C14N version of the, <laughs> of the XML. And then you get this, this triple signature, all that. And if, any bit on any of these three steps is incorrect, then it doesn't work. Then you get a different uh, signature. Yeah, one bit is very important. It's the same for CSC and for parity, of course. If it, one bit flips, it's, it's broken. Yeah, it doesn't work anymore. So, uh, this, uh, this, this works. The parallel operation on the crypto signatures work uh, until one of our customers complained that it stopped working. It didn't work on his system, the regression test, but it did work on my system. And we spent, he spent three days on it, and I spent one day on trying to figure out what's the difference between our two systems. What's the bug? One bit dropped up for everyone. And apparently it's a, a new version of Dietitia. Good. Well, this is Dietitia. If you look at the manual page, uh, it has uh, two uses. Either you use it in the, the functional interface, or you use it in the object oriented and uh, it speaks about data which is signed, so sequence of bits. And here I can add data or add data from a file. This is if you if you have a string containing ones and zeros, you can add bits. And then you get the base 64 digest, for instance, is usually included in the XML messages. The base so what I have to do in this XML is I have this, this, this element. The, the body of the message, and then I see what the end it, and then I uh, calculate the SHA about it, and then the base 64 arguments, and then the digest. It worked. Until digest SHA 5A. And uh, you will see it soon, because now uh, all the, if you install a new version of Linux, or so you, are your, you will get new versions of digest SHA, and you will break. I forgot this. <laughs> I forgot that this is the. Uh, uh, I work in real X, uh, uh, UTF 8 in my pro programs. I like UTF 8. I do everything in UTF 8. Yeah? And I forgot that SHA is, of course, on bits and not on, on UTF 8. Yeah? I need data. SHA is calculated about bits. Well, if you go and look in the new Digest uh, menu page, you see a new chapter on Unicode and side effects of Unicode. And you read it here. Now let's uh, enlarge it a bit. Be aware that the Digest routine silently converts UTF-8 input into a byte sequence of native encoding. It's what it calls downgrade, that means that it translates UTF-8 fragment into Latin 1. Is this um, UTF-8 encoded or is this Perl's internal UTF encoding that it talks about? So, because both are called UTF-8 in our community, which is highly confusing, but it, it would mean something entirely different because... This means that if the UTF-8 flag is on, just oh, in, right. then it will downgrade. Then it does exactly everything that Perl internals do. Yes. So, but, but, but in that case, this documentation is broken because this is incredibly confusing the way to it. Well, it's even worse. But uh, <laughs> the side effects, side effects in bit signing influences only the way that Perl stores data internally. Oh yeah. And I thought that SHA was used to communicate, yeah, uh, passwords and my my XML messages. 
So if one of the, the two parties is just changing the bits, then it doesn't work anymore. Uh, here, <coughs> I have uh, four representations of, uh, of this. I needed some timer on it. And uh, the, the checksums for uh, the data uh, shell before 5A2. And you see that I can make two versions which are uh, produce the same uh, checksum and two versions which are different. And after that, I can also produce two which are the same. Hmm. Well, this one is uh, 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 so the newer version is downgrade. So downgrade should have eight until letter one or no kind of copy. And uh, uh, when the, the, the UTF-8 character is too large, doesn't fit in this, this, uh, this byte sequence, then it will just uh, carve when you call it. it just shows, uh, can't downgrade it. So, so you can imagine what, what I did here. The first one is uh, just pure letter one, just uh, a string without UTF-8 character. Uh, the second one is uh, the, the very simplest way of uh, uh, letter one UTF-8. Uh, this is uh, uh, when I name uh, cleanly have encoded it from UTF-8 into bytes. And this is, uh, for instance, uh, uh, this is an A with a composite composed schema on it. And it also happens. For instance, uh, I have now an application where people uh, load up, upload files to a web server. And on Windows and, and Unix, if you type uh, a trima, a composite uh, pull out, then uh, uh, you get one character. But if you use Mac, you get two characters. You get the A and the composite will stay in. You see the difference in size. Um, what is even worse? Uh, here I call uh, Shai in day 64. Yeah, I have this string. Then I call uh, uh, my routine. And before the routine, my string is set to long, and after it is five. Yes, because you're using bytes. You requested this. You, you requested to peek into Perl's internals. No, it's, it's. That's what the module bytes does. The, no, the pro, no, that's not the bytes that, that's doing it. It's the downgrade, which is uh, no. changed. Yes. It's if, if you had used UTF 8 instead, and your source code were UTF 8 encoded, then before and after it would be fine. No, no. This is the downgrade in the routine, the shower routine, mm -hmm. which downgrades the string, the original string, and keeps it that way. Okay. There is a, a, a book report about that uh, by Sephron. So it it's really mutilates my constant string in my main program. Yeah? And if it contains white characters, it will go break. So you will uh, have. You won't have this problem if you double quote the, the column X in the share base call. Uh, because then it makes a copy. Yeah. It, 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 maybe at the top of my a, a previous slide uh, indicated a step in between uh, the UTF-8 and code. Yeah, I should. Oh, yeah, you're, 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 you're skipping that step now. That's this one. Yeah, that, that was my bug. Right. But uh, the. Uh, okay, the same bug in the other <coughs> side. Did you suggest? Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, the problem is that uh, sh uh, calculating shannons has nothing to do with characters. No. It has to do with bytes, with bits. Mm -hmm. You should be very, very careful of the bits. And there is a reason why they do the upgrade. Because uh, in Perl, you have these, these letter one strings. But accidentally, it, they may get upgraded at UTF-8 because you do a regular expression match on them, for instance. Uh, a regular expression with UTF-8 string. And then both will be. So accidentally, you may up upgrade the, 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 the letter string into letter string. But um, uh, it's very bad to have those accidents, but I don't think this is a solution. Unicode and character strings have nothing to do with Shannon Wild calculation. Yeah, you can better uh, croak, carp, break out when you get UTF-8 string when you calculate the Shannon so that you can find back where this accidentally upgrade has happened, then uh, just silently do something and calculate something and then see that no one understands you anymore with your, your shadow. 
So uh, actually, for some things it's still useful as long as you stay within Perl. If all your applications are Perl, well, then it's still maybe okay. Yeah? But if any, anyone started uh, writing for that applications uh, to check your, your passwords or so, then it doesn't work anymore. And you cannot compute it back again. You know? It's one way of finishing. So. Uh, <coughs> data transmission data transmission problems as long as it's between Perl. Yeah? <coughs> okay. So when, as long as you stay in Perl, it's, it's, it doesn't hurt. But yeah, it's a, a bit wise operators. And it's not only that it is shadow, but it's also my base 64 which has been broken this way. It's the same auto, by the way. But uh, uh, I, I think it's the wrong way. Yeah, of uh, downgrade is just uh, uh, horrible. I, I have suggested this uh, because when your base still says that it expects data here, but it's a string of it uh, is correctly uh, expecting. So to, to stop this one and have an, uh, an, an add string for people who still think it's uh, sane to do something with strings and so on, but then don't forget normalization, UTF-8 normalization in this process. Um, what is totally ignored now? And have a separate add bytes which is compatible with the old versions of Shell one and which just grow if it sees the UTF-8 flag. So that's what, uh, what I suggested, but it's totally even uh, by my wish is just uh, being rejected. So that's uh, what I want to tell you. So if you are using DataShark, please recheck whether you nicely encode your UTF-8 strings. If you do that, then do you still run into any of these problems? No. Okay. No. Because then you totally ignore that there are characters. You just say bits. Right. But um, downgrading, I'm not sure if it is the best solution. But it is what everything in the internals do. For example, if you use print on a file handle that doesn't have an encoding layer, uh, it will downgrade and it will warn if you have a white character. Yeah. So it, 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 is, it might not be the right solution, but it is at least consistent with the rest. Yeah, but SHA is a bit operator. And you're not doing it on bit operators. Yeah, but otherwise you'd have to copy the string um, to, to even figure out whether it's encoded or not, whether it's probably, properly encoded or not. And it should describe it. It should. It's a bit operator, bitwise operator. Nothing to do with strings. No so conversion. No downgrade, upgrade. Because it's not strings. Don't worry about encoding later. We get the message. No, it's something. With the it. issue is, Perl has strings that can contain more than just bytes. Yeah, but that's, that's what you're feeding it, and that's why it, why it breaks. But it can check for this without very expensive operations. And typically, SHA is also used on, on very large messages, like four gigabytes in size. And if, yeah. if you would have to, to check everything without downgrading, no, no, if, you should have downgrade. Just grab it to shoot your face, then, then you do something wrong. No, and you've got that copy. But, but there, there's, it's not easy in Perl or in C to check if the, uh, if the UTF-8 contains uh, only code points below 250. You don't have UTF-8. No, you should only accept bytes. You should not accept no, that, UTF-8. That, that, that's the issue. Um, whether or not the UTF-8 flag internally is on or not, yeah. Does not mean that you don't have a byte string. It does not indicate the type of the string. Pro doesn't have this concept. I know. I know we don't have it. So we should so have this block. But uh, yes, but uh, that's a much better way. Croaking, if the flag is on, would be a, a different mistake. But but silently changing shit is also it's it's also wrong. But this is what what. The, the Perl string model has. has you tried to explain why I did it. Yeah, but I know how the string model works, but it's not strings. So hey, you should protect yeah. people from using uh, doing this as strings. Uh, anyway. Anyway. No, but the, 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 so the, the, the solution would, would result in people presenting talks that it is broken. No, <laughs> it would still be broken, but in a different way. It's better that people get warned when they do something wrong than that. Maybe